Hello lovelies, I am the Fragnostic and welcome to another edition of the Holy Truth. Tonight we'll be taking a look at the Coma Cutting Class, a Korean survival horror adventure game from Steam, in which we find ourselves trapped in a high school pursued by a mysterious killer. There's horror in the halls, lynching in the lunchroom, murder in the metal shop. Ah, slaughter high. They don't write taglines like that anymore. Nowadays you just get shit like the Yogi Bear movie. Great things come in bears. Dear fucking God almighty, have mercy. It's for kids. You play Yongho, a freshman at Seowa High who has overslept on the last day of his final exams. Mercifully, the grueling tests have been delayed thanks to the attempted suicide of a classmate. Your pudgy buddy Seho suspects the bullying of the school dickhead, My Young Gil, but your devastatingly beautiful teacher, Miss Song, chalks it up to the stress of testing. Is this a good time to mention the intense discoloration of Yong Ho's left arm? Jesus Christ, I bet Miss Song's ruined more bed sheets than Freddy fucking Krueger. Try as you might to stay awake on the most important day of your life to date, Yong Ho's long night of studying, yeah, studying, backfires on him, and you soon find yourself helplessly spiralling into the land of Nod, only to awaken some hours later in the dark, deserted twilight of the school. But something is wrong, deeply wrong. You know, maybe it's the endless locked doors, or the black void of nothingness outside every window, the strange notes on the walls, or the impromptu barricades in the halls. I guess a large part of it is that Miss Song is now rampaging through the halls trying to remove your spleen with a box cutter, and your best friend is being used as a human donkey by a hell ghost. That'll throw you something fierce. The coma is played largely as a side-scrolling explorer with the A and D keys moving you back and forth through Seowa High, and E used to interact with doors, stairs and objects. The survival mechanics are kept to a minimum, leasing you a health bar and a sprint meter which can be topped up or enhanced by way of whatever snacks and drinks you find littered around the school or in the handful of vending machines scattered about the place. Look, even they know their students are teetering on the fragile side. They sell fucking anti-venom in the cafeteria. Opportunities to save your progress are plentiful, coming in the form of classroom chalkboards, which you really have no reason not to take advantage of wherever possible, and you certainly won't struggle for supplies, even if you never touch the vending machines. You carry your inventory in your bag, accessible via the B button, which has two compartments, one for key items and one for snacks. Your snack stash only has a finite number of space, so you'll often find yourself purging out the items you don't need, such as the never-ending trail of bottled water you find. The only thing it does is restore your stamina, and you'll have plenty of time to recover that while you're hiding, which you'll spend half the game doing anyway. Why? Because although this game has only one enemy, she is utterly fucking relentless and can smell your soul from two floors away. We'll get to her in a minute. Your main objective in the coma is to escape the school you find yourself trapped in and along the way try to figure out exactly what the fuck has happened to you. You'll find a solid amount of that out from the various characters you run into, but there's a healthy supporting plot to be strung together from the dozens and dozens of notes that turn up on your travels. You'll have to be vigilant to find them all though, well I say vigilant, what I actually mean is search every fucking room about 20 times per playthrough because new notes spawn to replace the old ones seemingly every time a scripted event happens. Now I don't know about you, but I've always found the idea of communicating a game's story through notes kind of fundamentally distracting, especially in a horror title. Who the fuck is going to sit there and scribble out a blow-by-blow -blow account of the brown trousered terror they're attempting to evade? Who is in that much of a hopeless rush to die? Well, refreshingly, the coma has an answer for you. Meet the Note Man, the emaciated man-weasel behind the literate litterings. His angle is that he simply records what he's overheard in conversation, and turns his surroundings into kind of a ritualistic library. He's really one of a number of things that the game gets right, from the beautiful presentation to the excellent English language localization of the story and dialogue, 
it's really kind of a shame that for as enthusiastically as the coma gets these points right, there's others lurking just behind them waiting to exhaustively piss you off. Miss Song. Oh my fucking god. Where to even begin with this cunt? Well, how about with the positives? She is a genuinely unsettling villain, pursuing you from practically the first real moment of the game to the last without fucking mercy. As you progress, she becomes increasingly more deadly, at first trying to merely peel you like an orange with a box cutter, before finding herself a much more efficient fire axe that will send your health bar plunging like a barrel of shit down a mountain. Aside from a few set pieces, Miss Song consistently stalks whichever area you're in, and whenever she finds you, which she will announce with an ear-splitting shriek, your only option is to run like a motherfucker to one of the game's many hiding spots. Here you can be waiting for anything from 20 seconds to a couple of minutes, while she runs around frothing at the fucking mouth, wondering where somebody could possibly be hiding in a bathroom, like he's just vanished into thin fucking air, before she wanders off and clears the coast. But watch out, because some of these stalls and cupboards are locked or full of crap, so it always pays to remember the last viable cowering spot on your route. Miss Song looks as brutal as she acts, and the first couple of times you encounter her are genuinely jarring, but the problem is that the next 2,000 times you run into her are less mortifying than they are ball-breakingly aggravating. She will, without fail, always be guarding the place you need to get to, even if it means having to literally teleport across the building from your last meeting. Miss Song doesn't give a fuck about dimensional lore, not when you're trying to explore the fourth floor without getting your kidneys removed. Now early on this isn't such a huge deal. She only takes one notch off your health meter, and with the sheer amount of food you find lying around, sometimes it's less fuss just to take a hit running past her than it is to waste five minutes repeatedly hiding in the same toilet stall, but later on, God help you. The minute she comes at you with that fucking axe, you're losing half your health in one blow, and believe you me, if she goes too long without a taste of blood, she will start pulling some bull's dirty fucking tactics to get it. Complicating matters is the fact that once you get around midway into the coma, numerous environmental hazards begin to show up. There's these poisonous pustules that explode all over you, permanently disabling a point of your health until you get hold of some anti-venom, these bloody ceiling ninjas that drop on top of you, and by far the most irritating, corpses that slash at your ankles as you run past them which inflict bleeding damage, slowly draining your life out unless you've got a bandage handy. Now it's worth noting that there's no safe or quick way to disarm these traps besides waiting patiently for them to attack and disappear, which is, you know, annoying while you're simply exploring, but if you're being chased down by this axe-wielding lunatic, you don't get that fucking luxury, so you have to take the hit, and they respawn every time you re-enter the area. And yeah, while there's a shit ton of food lying around to cure yourself with, there's an extremely scarce amount of bandages and anti-venom to permanently close the wounds, which you have to be in the clear to do because the coma won't stop the action while you're pissing about in your inventory, or in a save menu, or reading a note, or reading game dialogue. Look at this shit, you can get poisoned while reading fucking unskippable dialogue. Oh no, the things that want you dead in this game don't give a shit if you're trying to find out why they want you dead, they just want you dead. It becomes fucking unbearable during the closing stages of the coma, where the school is collapsing around you, sealing off all but one predetermined passage through the entire building, because now, if Miss Song manages to get ahead of you, which she will, there is no escape. You can hide in the toilet all you like, but every time you emerge she'll be there to chase you back in, so I hope you've got half a life bar spare to take an axe in the face with. Oh what, you haven't, because you're being poisoned and cut to ribbons by shit you can't even see anymore? Well, that's you fucked. But despite how teeth shatteringly frustrating it becomes towards the finale, I'm actually going to recommend the coma. Reason being that it's one of the best story-driven horrors to show up on Steam in a long time. The dialogue is well written and humorous, bringing a little levity to the terrifying high school, and the drive to uncover the morbid drama that lies underneath it manages to outweigh even the game's more aggravating shortcomings, although it's perhaps a touch too repetitive to tackle in one sitting. 
Now trust me on this one, it really is worth the try. I'll see you again soon.